Hello and welcome to another adventure on this planet Earth. I'm Mark Gilchrist and this week we're going to explore the golden age of travel. Come along for the ride. No reservations required. That's right, for all of known history, it has never been cheaper, safer, more efficient, uh, more fun, more exciting to travel than it is right now. Well, except for one part of travel, <laughs> airlines, and I'll get to that later. So let's take it step by step, okay? It has never been easier to find a hotel around the world than it is right now. Websites like Airbnb and Booking.com certainly make it easier to book rooms, but they have done far more for the hotel and accommodation industry. First of all, it's, it's created an explosion of supply. I've been into many, many towns where a decade or two ago, there might have been only one or two hotels. But now, you roll into any town, there'll be a dozen choices at the very least, sometimes hundreds. Second, the whole internet thing drives the prices down to an extent. Every hotelier can easily see what his competition is charging and try and charge just a little bit less. All right, so next, what's the room look like? Chances are it looks a lot more modern, cleaner, and newer. First of all, here we are at, at an explosion of hotel rooms. So there are millions of new hotel rooms around the world. If somebody wants to open a little guest house or something anywhere and they know nothing about it, they can learn from these websites what they need to put in their room. So in effect, these internet sites are educating people on how to build and run a hotel. So once you get in the hotel and uh, you want to spend the night, why is it safer? With these online sites, each hotel is going to have a reputation and they want to keep that reputation clean. Another reason is CCTV cameras. Uh, they're, they're everywhere. And then there's the nature of the hotels and the family is sleeping downstairs in the lobby sometimes. And so, whereas in a normal hotel, any stranger can just wander through the halls unnoticed. In these places, they don't let strangers in. So it has been, in my experience at least, that hotels these days are really pretty safe. In the tourist areas, where there are mobs of people looking to take advantage of tourists, that's where you kind of run into a little sketchy situations and you want to be extra careful. But out in the villages or the small towns or cities, everywhere I've been, it's been incredibly safe. Many cities I've been to actually have a department called Tourism Police. I've never had to use them, but I've felt safer knowing they're there. And in traveling these past two years, I've noticed a lot more women traveling. It's apparently gotten a lot safer. And then what happens when you check out? If you weren't happy during your stay, you can leave a rating, just like you've known with Airbnb or Uber. And these hoteliers, they really care about those ratings. Wow, this is a beautiful school. Hello. I, 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 Hello. I have, a, I have a few friends here. I just wandered in on the campus. I thought they were gonna kick me off, but no. They just all wanna. They just wanna party between okay. classes. Now let's talk about the hard times of travel these days. Yeah, that's air travel. Now, how many of you have traveled in the past few years? And how many of you have faced extra charges for bags, for meals, paid extra for a special seat? And how many of you have complained about that and said, man, it was so much better back in the old days? It certainly was simpler back in the old days. But was it better, really? Was it cheaper? I doubt it. Back in the old days, you paid for that seat. You paid for bags, even if you didn't check any. Someone had to pay for them. It was just all included in the ticket price. Here's another reason why this age of travel is golden. It's actually better now. Back when everyone got two free, three free carry-on bags, they would bring two, three, four, and weigh down that plane. Every pound of luggage burns fuel on the plane. And so now that people are being more careful about what they bring, we're carrying less luggage on every flight, burning less fuel, saving our environment. And air travel these days is really stressful because planes are fully loaded and you can't just cancel or, or reschedule your flight. And there's a very good reason for that. Computers and the internet 
back in the 90s even, 80s, a good chance the plane would be half full. Nowadays, that plane is 90% full. That's because of online booking and the internet has made it very efficient. Now, when the planes were only half full, airlines could be a lot more lax in rescheduling and leaving your seat empty because it'd probably go empty anyway. But now, it's a, it's a fight to pack every airplane as tight as possible. Is that a good thing? Yeah, it's a great thing. Supposedly it keeps costs down or it increases the CEO's bonuses. But for the environment, it's a great thing. Now, I may be traveling near the bottom of the ladder, but I'm not on the bottom rung. I'll stay in hostels, guest houses, homestays, whatever. I don't stay in the dorms. I usually get a private room with a private bathroom. Even then, my hotel cost has averaged about $10 a day. My overall cost for these past two years has been about $1,000 a month. My real expense, though, is that I'm not earning money. Now, with the internet and virtual jobs, sure, that's possible, but I think you better line up such a job before you leave. And countries around the world are now establishing tourism departments that are utilizing their natural and man-made resources and making them more available to tourists. And thanks to the internet, uh, it's now easier to plan your trip because just about any city on this planet Earth will have some kind of description somewhere explaining things to do, things to see. It's now even possible to arrange for some of your visas online. ATMs are nothing new. They've been around for generations. But lately, many banks are actually reimbursing you for the fees you incur while using the ATM overseas. Another way the internet has made it easier for you to travel is through navigation. Google Maps, all the other map services. Websites like Facebook and Instagram certainly have made it easier to keep in touch with family and friends back home, but also by telephone, uh, Skype. I find the most useful app to use is Google Hangouts. Uh, I can call any telephone, payphone, PBX, uh, whatever in the United States, free of charge for as long as I want. These days, Wi-Fi is available in nearly every hotel. I don't even bother to check. And it's usually pretty good, sometimes very good. So how much longer will this golden age of travel last? Things are still going very well. It's very safe out there. The hotel market uh, is still at flood stage. Prices are competitive. The dollar's still strong and it's still very safe. So when people ask me, Mark, um, when do you think would be a good time to travel? My response usually is, how's tomorrow look for you? Well, thanks for hanging. I hope you enjoyed the adventure. I'm Mark Gilchrist, and I am, and you are, we all are, on this planet Earth.